You're very welcome, James. Uh, so this is an interview between uh, Tony Foy, Executive Director of Net Ministries Ireland, and James Michalosic, the founder of Net Ministries Canada and Ireland. And while I'm sure the story of the inception of Canada is a beautiful one, we're going to concentrate today on the story of how Net Ireland came to be. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to ask you, who is James Michalosic? Who am I? Um, you know, I, uh, I'm just a simple farmer and rancher and logger from out in British Columbia, out in the mountains of, the, of Canada. And I was called by God to, uh, to uh, evangelize, to share about him and the love that I had experienced with uh, everybody I meet. And so uh, I've been uh, blessed uh, yeah, with a beautiful life of, of faith. and. Uh, I'm a full-on Catholic, and uh, yeah, love, love life, and love, love our faith, and love, uh, love life. Just love, great. Uh, great, James. So just to, so that uh, people know a little bit about you, tell us just a little bit about what it was like growing up in the Michalasic household. Am I pronouncing your name properly? Actually, it's Michalasic. Michalasic. <laughs> some people pronounce Michalasic. Some people pronounce Michalasic, but I, I, I go by Michalasic. Okay. So what, yeah. what, what was the Michael Osick family uh, environment like? What was the culture like in your house growing up, in your home? You know, we were, uh, we grew up in, I grew up in a ranching family. So we were, uh, we lived on our ranch out in Kamloops, British Columbia, in the mountains. And uh, grew up, uh, yeah, as a family, it was a family of five, two brothers and two sisters, my mom and my dad. And uh, we had a herd of cattle and, uh, we, I would say as far as our, our faith life goes, we, we prayed the rosary. Like my mom was Irish. She was born in Ireland in County Cork. And, uh, and so she, uh, there was a real strong Catholic identity there. And so we, my, my dad too, my dad grew up Catholic too, uh, in, in, outside of Camus. He was born in Camus. His parents were immigrant uh, farmers as well. And, uh, but uh our family was a, it was a beautiful family, uh, really good. Um, you know, we prayed, like I said, we prayed the rosary almost every night uh, and uh, went to church every Sunday. Uh, and we, we really, I think a key part of our life was uh, when we, my parents experienced the seal and our family experienced the seal and uh, the Christian movement and, us, young, us kids, we were in our teenage years. We got involved with challenge, or what they call a challenge around here, but it's a search out in, in British Columbia. We got involved with search and putting retreats on, and it was it was just really beautiful to have that. And then as our as our whole family being involved with Curcio, uh, that Curcio movement, and uh, yeah, it was just a beautiful experience of faith for right. us. It was beautiful. And we. Would you have described your faith as a personal faith through your family, or was it through the challenge movement uh, that your your faith became personal? I would say it was a combination. It truly was a combination because I think, um, uh, you know, we I, I didn't mind praying the rosary as a family. Like it, it gave me a lot of peace, and uh, I loved uh, going to church with my family, and. Uh, uh, I, I would say it really came alive, though. Uh, I don't know about, yeah, I guess more personal as well with the Curcio and the search movement. And then, uh, you know, even more so with NET and, and that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, it was, I would say it was a combination of both. It was a, it was like a, my family did the, the tilling of the soil and, uh, and then the seeds and sowing of the seeds. And then, you know, it was a good, good ground, good, uh, a good anal farmer analogy there to, Go with right. Right. Uh, your story actually is very similar to my own uh, with search was a big which was the the youth version of Curcio and my, my parents did something like Curcio and that, that had a big impact on them as well so ju just in terms of net ministries you, you did net with uh, Mark Bertram and net USA how, how did that come to be I haven't ever heard the story of, of how that happened well you know we were uh, I was in uh, in Williams Lake at the time in British Columbia, we had just uh, purchased another ranch up in Williams Lake. So we had two ranches. We were only wanting one, but we ended up with two. 
And uh, we were going through some financial difficulties as a family because of the two. We got caught in that in that cycle in the early 80s where interest rates went to 23%. And uh, it was very difficult on our, on our, our business and our family. And uh, But anyways, I was... There happened to be this team of people, of young people that came into Williams Lake and they were just coming in just to, for a visit and to have a meal. And uh, I think we actually hosted a couple of them. And uh, actually, no, we didn't host that that time. We, we didn't host them, but they, they came through and we joined them for the meal. And I was just like, oh my God, that was Joe Mindrup. And I can't remember his co-leader, but Joe Mindrup was on that team. And then the next year when they came, I was like, oh, man, they're really a nice group of people. I think, I'd, you know, so they, they were putting on a family retreat, a three-hour family retreat, you know, at our parish. And I said to my brother, Joe, I said, Joe, I think I would really like to go to that. And so Meg Nichols was the, uh, was the team leader at that time. And she was uh, actually became my supervisor after that. But when she, I, I remember, it, it just clear as day, Kelly Green was on that team. And he gave his testimony. I didn't know what a testimony was. I didn't know he was giving me his testimony. But he gave his testimony as we were waiting for dinner, you know. And uh, and it was just really beautiful to see these young people, you know, sharing their faith just so freely and together and just inspiring. And um, I think that was my initial, uh, that's where the call began for me to do NET because I was like, oh, my gosh, I, I, I love search. I love doing retreats with search. I love the whole aspect of sharing my faith with young people and I could do it every day like that yeah. would be instead of just once every three or four months you know yeah, yeah. Um, so I was like wow that would be amazing you know so yeah. great yeah. great so I, so, I replied to net USA net they were from net USA yeah and they they were out they'd always send teams up to Canada from from the uh, US and so that that was a net USA team and then uh, I was interviewed and went down and uh, became part of Net USA. I volunteered for Net USA. Uh, took a leave of absence from our. At, at that time, uh, I was part of our fa family logging business. We had actually lost our ranch at the time, so our, our ranch uh, uh, we ended up because of the financial difficulties. And we went logging as a family, and uh, my brothers and I, and and we were able to, uh, you know. But I, I took a leave of absence from our logging business. Went down. And went to Net USA uh, down there in St. Paul, Minnesota. Great. Where I met Bircham, Lori Krupp, uh, Bob Bernou, uh, Tim Tim Dayheim, Peter Bellary, all these really be beautiful people from Net USA that just really were inspirational for me. Great, great. And did you do one year or two years uh, with Net as a missionary? I know you were on staff at one stage. Yeah, I was uh, I was on uh, the team for one year, and I was the team leader that year, uh, co-leader with Teresa Besker, and um, it, and then they asked me to be, uh, yeah, they asked me if I wanted to supervise and to look at uh, the possibility. Bob Renew asked me if I wanted to supervise and look at the possibility of starting up uh, Net Canada, and I was like, yeah, I definitely was interested in. I like the idea of supervising, but I especially like the idea of helping to get uh, Net Canada rolling uh, and wow. more work uh, for our Canadian youth. That's fantastic. Uh, I didn't know that before, that there was an, a, a, an intention on Net USA's part to actually start up Canada as well. Yeah, yeah. So they, they had encouraged, you know, they asked me if I wanted, and I said, well, you know, I'm taking a leave of absence for one year from my family's business. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, how long will the how long do they anticipate? And they said, well, it'd be about two years. You'd be down here, and then you'd go up. But it actually ended up being five years that I was volunteering down in the states. Wow, wow. And then I, in 1990, that was in 1998. Mm. And 1994 is when uh, I came up to Canada with Tiffany Scott. Tiffany Scott was uh, was uh, like my co-founder mm. at Canada. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. So let me let me ask you a curveball question. Uh, Teresa Besker, she was your co-leader on your on your team. Uh, yes. do, you, do you still keep in contact with Teresa? Where where is she at in her life? Just a curveball I there. I, I haven't seen. I haven't talked to her since we left the road. 
James, <laughs> come on. <laughs> no, I told him that. I said, you know, I'm not a writer. I don't give a touch. And uh, God bless you. I really will be praying for you. And I do pray for them periodically. And uh, But I'll, I'll hopefully see you in heaven. You know? Yeah, but, yeah, good for you. I, I, I didn't so, make any promises that I knew I wasn't going to keep, and I and I and I haven't seen most of them since I left the road. You know, I've seen yeah. a few of them since then, but some of them came to my wedding and stuff. But, uh, great, great. I so if Teresa's out there, Teresa, contact James and just tell him where you're at with your life. <laughs> so, so you spent five years with Net uh, Net USA. In a sentence, what was that like? In a sentence. Um, it was a life-changing experience for me. Yeah, being wow. being um, like I was living in household there. I was uh, surrounded with a lot of really beautiful young adults and families, and uh, you know it was just a really beautiful experience. A lot of met alumni, and um, and uh, actually, and and in the, the best part about it is that's where I met my wife. She wasn't my. She didn't become my wife there, but that's how we got to know each other. Was through all that and uh, Patty. Patty Donnie. Great. Was, great. Was and did Patty do Net USA as well? No, she was involved with St. Paul's Outreach. That's the yes, uh, sister organization. Sister, sister organization, and that was uh, you know uh, Gordy D. Murray, who is the founder of that. I lived with him for three three years, and uh, wow. his family, and it was yeah, it was really really awesome. Beautiful. Great. Had a beautiful schedule of going to mass every day and adoration every day and going to work and walking. first couple of years I was down there I just walked everywhere and, and then got rides with people because I was mm. you know I was living uh, I was volunteering so I didn't have a lot of money and then in the summertime I'd go home and do logging mm -hmm. with my brother and my dad and uh, and make a bit of money there and then that would support me over the rest of the year and stuff you know, so. Wow. No, that's great. So I'm gonna. It sounds like we're we're heading into the story of Net Canada right now. So let let's just jump ahead, uh, yep. and and get over that one. And and so Net Canada is going. And what? How, how did Net Ireland come about? Like how, what 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 happened there? <laughs> okay. What what the heck happened there? <laughs> okay. Um, I think. Uh, let me see. It all actually started before I was even on Net. Because I uh, I went to my cousin my first my first cousins in Ireland, uh, and they were in, at that time they were in uh, Kilkenny. Oh, they're still in Kilkenny. Mm, Padraig Collins, uh, Padraig Collins, and mm -hmm. and uh, and so I I, um, <clears throat> I went to his wedding. I was the best man in his wedding, so I went over and uh, me and my brothers, my brother Joe and my sister. Uh, uh, Bernadine and I think Lori was with us too. We went and and we went to the wedding and uh, it was the first time, trip to Ireland in 1984 or 85, I think it was somewhere in there. Mm. And uh, it was just amazing because everybody went to church. Like the place was packed, you know. It was yeah. just like, and they had four or five masses. I was just like, wow, this is amazing, you know. And so, so then. My mom, uh, when I, I, I started up Net Canada in um, 1994, mm -hmm. and that was uh, the first, my, da my pet dad actually passed away in 1995, before our, just before our banquet, our first year banquet. Wow. And, um, and my mom had never been back to Ireland since she left. She actually hadn't hardly ever been in an airplane before. Um, so she, she, uh, we were like, mom, you got to go back to Ireland, see Ireland. And so in 1998, I took my mom back to Ireland. So that was, you know, uh, for 13 years later, mm. 14 years, yeah, 13, 13 years later. And, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. 13 years later. And then all of a sudden I, we get over there and to Ireland, I was just, I couldn't believe how few people were going to church, especially young people. Mm. And it really burdened me. It really, God used that experience of just mm. putting a real burden on my heart for the the, the people of Ireland, but especially mm. the youth of Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, that here we have this beautiful gift of net and how the good work we're doing in, in Canada and stuff with this. And and I was just like, man, we we have to try to do something like this in Ireland. Like, how do we how do we like 
I grew up with a lot of um, not, some missionaries that came from Ireland mm -hmm. to evangelize mm -hmm. in Canada. Mm -hmm. And I thought, my gosh, here they're having a difficult time. We like we have mm -hmm. to try to do something for Ireland. They've done so much for the entire world, sending mm -hmm. their missionaries everywhere. Mm -hmm. How do we how do we try to uh, not repay, but almost to thank them? Thank mm -hmm. our Irish church and the I Irish people for sending out all these missionaries everywhere. And I thought, what a better way to do that than mm -hmm. to have a, young, a group of young people to go and share the faith over there and try to help help them in their time of need of evangelization, especially mm -hmm. young evangelization. So mm -hmm. I think that was a catalyst and that was the, the time and, and just set the fire in me and the, my staff too. My staff was amazing during that time. Our, you know, the net ministry staff, because they all, they were all, yeah, let's let's do this thing. And then our alumni got behind it. We did a three-month uh, trial uh, mission team mm. just to see how it worked and check out the culture. Yeah. And, and before you did that, um, like, so you, you so know very few people, people you know that? Padraig, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you so, know very few people in Ireland. How, like, how did you set it up? I, I, like, I've heard the story before, but I just want you to tell it so that other people know it. Yeah, so basically, I... Uh, we basically said, sent a letter. I says, how do we do this? Best thing is, to do, we, always, we don't go anywhere we're not invited by the bishops. Mm -hmm. So I said, let's send a letter to all the bishops of Ireland and see if we can get any responses. See if there are anybody open. You know, we don't want to go where we're not invited. We're not just going to push our way in. So let's just, and so we got a response from uh, Letter Kenny and from um, uh, Bishop Boyce. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and then also from uh, um, down in Dublin. Mm. The only two dioceses we got uh, response from, but a lot of really, a lot, a lot of real encouragement from um, from Letter Kenny and uh, mm. and that area there with uh, Bishop mm -hmm. Boyce. And so he uh, he basically put us on to uh, to work with his uh, uh, one of his assistants, Sister Susan, and Sister Susan helped to. Uh, event, Sister Susan the Evangelist, and she w was very instrumental in helping us to get going up there in that area. And then down in Dublin, uh, there was, um, gosh, I can't even remember the people's names that helped us there, but they're really good. It was a youth office. Yeah. The guys, the, and they were really helpful. Jared, Jared Gallagher, I think, might have been one of them. He was a guy uh, working for the Dublin Archdiocese at the time. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe not. Yeah, that's a familiar name, yeah. Yeah. But it was... Uh, it was a very, you know, we, we basically went in and we were just like, like we were, we were, we're invited here. We're mm -hmm. not going to, we're going to try a few things, but we had a beautiful team. Like the team mm -hmm. was amazing. And, uh, so, and, and tell us about that three month period, uh, that, that you came over to Ireland with, a, an exploratory team, let's call it. Um, like a, a, a team of legends, Sheila trainer was on that team. Uh, Matt and Cameron Pratt, they, they weren't even married. They hadn't met. I don't, I don't know if they had met even at that stage. And lots of yeah. other amazing people. Yeah, uh, a JP De Florio was on that. That's team. right, JP. Yeah, all these uh, amazing people: Dan Bolak, uh, Laura Hera, um, uh, uh, but it's just a an awesome group of people. You have to put the names of the people up of that team because they were just really beautiful. Yeah, people. we have them on the board in the in the net center in Rosnella. They're they're yeah. all up in the fo great photograph of them. Yeah, so it was uh, really a beautiful team. My wife Patty and I supervised them, and mm -hmm. uh, and so we we came out uh, once every two or three, probably once a month. We came over to, to visit them with our kids, mm -hmm. and um, stayed with you, Tony, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, a very good host. And it was a beautiful it was a beautiful time. But you know, we we really learned quickly that it was you know when you're bringing your faith, bringing the faith. You, you got to be open to whatever the Lord wants, however the Lord wants you to share it with a different culture. Mm -hmm. And you got to be really respectful. You just can't go in there thinking, well, this is how we do it back in our country. And this is how it's going to be done here. It's like, no, 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 no. Like it's, mm -hmm. it was, uh, and it was, you know, we found with the young people there in Ireland, it was just beautiful because they didn't like the whole opening session thing that much as far as the, uh, kind of like icebreakers and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, very, and so they, they wanted to get right into it right now. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. and so by our second small group, they're like, they're talking about 
everything. Like it was just, oh my gosh, like, okay, if you want to talk about this, we're going to get into it. And, and it was powerful. Like the retreats were so powerful. Like we had priests that we were working with and they were just like, you know, we, 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 we wanted to have offer confession or, or mass at every, mm. every retreat we could. And, uh, and we had the priests, like we really, we almost had confession, the sacrament of reconciliation at every, every single retreat. Mm. So we really, that was our main focus to prepare the young people for the sacrament. And man, we had lineups for the confession. Mm. And the kids would come out of the confessional crying, but even more so, the priests would come out of the confessional crying because yeah. they were so blessed by, like, yeah. they, it, was, it was a really difficult time in the church right then because, mm -hmm. uh, in our, because of the abuse cases and stuff. And, and, uh, and there was a trust. There were, like, all well, these young people, you know, it was, it was pretty, pretty tense then. And, but, boy, this really broke the ice as far mm -hmm. as just showing the priests that the young people are beautiful. And, and they want to know the Lord and, and they want to experience him and encounter him. And, mm. and that the sacraments were just so a big part of important part of them encountering him mm -hmm. and they encountered him. We had, we had young people, uh, uh, yeah, they're lining up, but then the teachers and that would have the buses waiting for the kids after the retreat and they'd be waiting for an hour because mm. the kids were going to confession still. So the mm -hmm. retreat would go long and we're like, mm -hmm. Hey, you know, we can't, you know, mm -hmm. like God, it was, really, it was just really beautiful to mm -hmm. see how, how that happened. I, I've actually heard stories 15 years on of the priests and the effect, the positive effect that it had on the priests at a time whenever they were really struggling in their own priesthood. They were afraid of young people and, yeah. and they, you know, they hadn't heard a, a proper confession from a young person due to the fear factor, but also due to the way just the, that young people weren't getting an opportunity to really enter in. And the net retreats really prepared them for just diving in and being really honest and and you know an openness there to to what god had for them and it, it was beautiful yeah it was really beautiful and i think also too it was a time for us to to you know invite the parishes too to participate that you know we'd talk on weekend on weekend masses and stuff and just invite the whole, try to have the whole parish involved somehow as mm. far as even, even just uh, encouraging encouraging it and supporting it financially and all the rest mm -hmm. of that. And it, was, it was really well received. It was really beautiful. And, and then mm -hmm. Sister Susan was really instrumental in your in area up there in Donegal mm, area. Brilliant. Yeah, she did a yeah. lot of work, good work. Yeah. Father Rory Brady as well. Yeah, Rory Brady, Father Rory. And oh my gosh, it was just a really good group of people. And then down in, and then, so that started, that set the, to, the tone and get, gave us an, uh, it's like, okay, this actually, this works actually awesome in Ireland. So, mm -hmm. and then that's when we recruited for the following year and we sent another full team over there. And by then we were able to have a full schedule set up over there. And then Sheila, Sheila Trainer uh, was very instrumental in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in making that happen. Or she stayed over there, she made it happen. Mm -hmm. And then Matt, Brad and Cameron joined her after a while too. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, you know, Mark Bennett from Ireland, he That's came, right. he, he uh, was yeah. very instrumental too and get, keep it rolling. But that was the thing. Yep. You know, people say that I, I, I helped found, or I founded net Ireland. Well, it wasn't just me and I, I didn't just found net Canada. It was, it was, it was, it was my, yes, it was an idea and, and I felt the call from God to do it. Yeah. But it would not have happened if it wasn't for all these good people, like what, what, the people, the Sheila trainers. I just talked to Sheila the other day, and, and it was just so beautiful to hear her voice. And, and Yeah, she is a beautiful, Sheila trainer is a beautiful soul. I yeah. you, you know this already, but I'll just say it for anybody who wants to know. Sheila lived with our family for five years, and it was one of the, it, it was, uh, we've had long-term people staying with us ever since, because it was such a wonderful experience with, with Sheila and like our kids grew up with Sheila being there what a, an amazing example of this young woman who was so full of faith and and yet great fun great crack uh, enjoy enjoyed herself uh, but yet when the chips were down I remember one uh, in 2010 there was a really bad snowfall and we our drive yep. is, re is really steep and we lost control of the van going to mass on Sunday morning and <clears throat> everybody was in it 
the seven kids and Sheila and ourselves and the van's going everywhere like a ping pong ball all over the place and we're all screaming and go ah and Sheila's going hail Mary full of grace the Lord <laughs> is with thee and like when the when the chips are down and and that's we'll, we'll never forget it you know and we were fine the, the van got busted up and all yeah. the rest but everybody was fine and yeah uh, yeah, yeah. And then I think I think too, you know, another person to talk about is is John JP. JP Absolutely. between the time he finished that that net that net experience that mission team that we sent there in, yeah. in January, we finished it in around December around Christmas time. JP had kind of stayed around and he helped get some youth ministry going there, which hugely impacted and yeah. set the groundwork for our teams to be able to come in there and, and absolutely he did and he he uh he went to people's houses and he just he hung out with kids and it was he was absolutely instrumental amazing and yeah. uh and, and he a lot of the young people around Balaban Fay that he was uh work working with but he, he was just hanging out with a lot of them have gone on to do net they've, they've married netters uh and you know the impact on their lives from 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 yeah. the initial you know everybody yeah. does their bit everybody carries the relay baton but the impact that's just the, the direct impact that he had on young people was was incredible and and yeah. and then somebody else does a bit and you know um yeah, yeah. really really yeah. incredible absolutely awesome and then cameron and uh, cameron it was mater at the time but uh, and matt Pratt. They ended up getting married, and then they came over, and they were youth ministers over there, and then they became working for Net uh, yeah. in Ireland. And was, up in Gidor, the youth ministers up in Gidor, up like in Gidor, in the back right. end of nowhere. Oh my gosh! And and all the masses were in Irish. Yeah, you know, like, they learned Irish up there, and but just that's that's the missionary heart of of the Netters. Like that's just mm -hmm. so beautiful that they 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 they're they're wanting to share. Christ with whoever they're with and and, and mm. it's just beautiful how mm -hmm. that that that's the found that's the founders of net ireland is all those good people there yeah indeed indeed and and i just want you to uh, look we're almost uh, we're almost done in terms of the story of net ireland but i would like to uh just tell us a bit about what you're interested in apart from like it, it sounds like you're you, you came from a very entrepreneurial family um you know you were involved in firemen um and you know you hit hard times and then you just went logging because you could and and you should and and did has that helped you in terms of how you started net canada and you know with all leading all those great people and the same with net ireland would you say that god had his hand in any of that that you know he was taking you on a journey oh, oh absolutely uh, absolutely you mean how is net your question is how is net my work with net impacted uh my life now uh, no no not so much that more how has your life impacted your start in net like you you've you've come through difficult times with your family uh, and yes. that's good that's good training for net uh yeah. and and then uh like so you, so you were involved in farming and now you're involved in lumberjacking and and uh you're you know so your 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 family was able to pivot and and despite yeah. the difficulties and go on and do something else and something we you know we're in the middle of the coronavirus right now we're pivoting and, and doing all sorts of things but in, in terms of you being able to start something like net canada or net yeah. Earth, which is not something that is uh, by any manner means a small ma matter do you think your family background helped you oh absolutely the entrepreneurial aspect and this i think the most important thing was our faith but also to our entrepreneurial not being afraid to take some risks and to if God is calling you to do something, you don't have to have it all figured out. You just got to go and do it. Mm -hmm. And you figure it out as it goes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But not to, yeah, you got to get some things in order. But if he's calling you to go, you go, you know, mm -hmm. just like with the coronavirus right now. It's like there's a beautiful opportunity right now to to share the faith with people. Like I've talked to a number of people and, and some of them have never had a meal with their family before. Now they're having meals with their family. It's a change in their family life. Like it's so beautiful, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I, I think just that, yeah, like there's opportunity. I think that's as an entrepreneur and and growing up in an entrepreneurial family, you you get to look at develop. Like I'm a developer. I develop mm -hmm. 
people and I develop ideas and I develop things and I and seeing the potential, the beautiful potential, especially of people mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and how to, yeah, there's an opportunity to evangelize, there's an opportunity to share our faith in Ireland and, and, uh, and, you know, and, and I think right now, like I was in on Net Canada's, uh, on Net Canada in the office for a number of years, 15 years. And, uh, and then 10 years ago, or no, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, I, uh, I decided that I needed to, you know, pull back a little bit. I wasn't, I'm not an office person and they needed more people there that were, uh, really amazing for, for that kind of gifts. And so mm -hmm. I pulled away and, and had an executive director come in and take over. Joe Vogel was the executive director mm -hmm. then and, and, uh, Pierre O'Reilly is now. And, uh, but just how, you know, now I'm, I mainly in land development and, and I'm still developing and mm -hmm. I'm working with some really beautiful people right now. So my, my partner, this is kind of a neat story. My partner in this land development we're doing right now, he brought Chris Seal to our diocese in Kamloops. Wow. And 45 years ago. And so now we're partnering. He's, he's been doing construction for 45 years now, Casey Van Dog. And, and now mm -hmm. we're, uh, we're developing this aging in place community. Like it's interesting that, that's what we're making here right now is our development. It's a, a, a large uh, aging in place community for, for retirees, for people to come. It's a waterfront property. It's just beautiful mm. that we're going to be able to make a really beautiful place for mm. our retirees to live. Mm. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and to, to not only live, but to thrive here because it's such a beautiful spot. Yeah. And hopefully uh, have better, uh, things in place for fighting the coronavirus <laughs> yeah indeed, indeed. and 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 just in terms of the other question how has your life with net affected your life and development i myself and sheena have been out there visiting yourself and, and patty and we witnessed you know you, you praying with the workmen on the building site in the mornings uh like what a what an incredible witness uh that, that is for everybody but like just uh, in terms of that question, how is your life with Ned? I mean, you give you give so many years of your life to God. You're still giving your life to God, but you're not working full time directly for Him. How is your life while working full time directly for Him with Ned affected your life working? You know, yeah, developing. I, I, I would say that that's that's a critical thing, and I think that that's a, a really beautiful thing. Like it's affected my life. Uh, it's affected my life. Uh, with my family even like it, 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 the, the, the need for prayer mm. prayer as personally prayer as a family prayer wherever we are pray be able to pray with our workers you know what i mean be able to pray mm. bringing the lord into whatever circumstance you're in and to to help let him let his light shine like let his joy come out of you and and don't be put a bushel basket or don't be afraid not don't mm. be afraid to to share him with others, whoever you're with in the marketplace, man, go into the marketplace, wherever you're at, you know, like it's beautiful with net to serve on net and to be on staff. And now that's what a beautiful gift that is. And for you, Tony, you're, that's your, that's your, your, your calling. Like that's a beautiful calling. Yeah. And, 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 uh, but you know, if a person like a net alumni, you're not called to do that. That's okay. God's still calling you to evangelize out in the marketplace, wherever, whatever work you or career you're choosing, and whatever vocation you're choosing, He's calling you to evangelize and to share Him with others. And that's, I think, the biggest thing mm -hmm. I've learned with that is, mm -hmm. and uh, and He's really, you know, and He blesses you with really beautiful people to be with. And uh, my family is spectacular. My wife Patty and my boys Liam and Morgan are just just the greatest gift in my life, you know, and, uh, and I'm just, yeah, really grateful for the, the life that I've had because of that. I think that's a key thing though. I, I wanted to just emphasize that, you know, some people, one of your questions was what, you know, what has that impact? It's like, you know, we're, Joan Paul II called it, talked about it being a culture, us transforming our culture from a culture of death to a culture of life. And, you know, that is what we're about. We are about transforming our culture to a culture of life. And you know, the place I see that the most is on net retreats. When the young people are transformed and, and have an encounter with God, you can see the encounter happening like in a matter of two hours. 
Mm -hmm. a, a net training where you see young people come to join a net team and they're transformed between the beginning of training and the end of training and then you see them at the end of the year and it's like oh my gosh this is this is this is real and then some of them marry each other or they go on to become priests or nuns or religious or whatever you know or single and and beautiful beautiful people beautiful lives and beautiful families that come mm -hmm. out of it it's a culture of life mm -hmm. and that's that's what gives me the greatest joy, just seeing that culture of life coming to be. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow, this is, this is transforming the culture. And that's, that's really beautiful. Christ is transforming the culture. He's, he's the one that's doing it, and, and he's doing it through net. He's, he's using it as a beautiful tool, you know, to, to, to bring the light of him to the, to the world, you know. I think right now, I'm, you know, I think right now I'm, I'm, I'm developing, I'm, I'm building this project here. but. I'm also a prospector. Like I, I love mineral exploration and, and I'm doing a bit of mineral exploration out in BC and I'm, I'm hoping to do more of that in the next little while here. And, but just working with good people out there too, you know, just wherever you're at, like just, just being able to, you know, share the joy of Christ with people. And you don't have to say much, mm. just joy. Like, mm. you know, that your joy is the key to evangelize. And that's what's mm. going to be the key to, uh, to, to getting people asking you questions because they're going to be bugged by how, how, how much you are joyful. You know? mm. James, I have thanked you many times in person and I just want to thank you uh, myself and my family and my wife, I, I, like four of our kids have done that or are currently doing that. And we're just incredibly grateful for the opportunity to be involved. And, and thank you uh, on behalf of all the people whose lives you have, you know, affected yourself or led people to affect and and yeah, I, I want to put that out there would you lead us in a final prayer before okay. we wrap it up sure in the father son holy spirit amen heavenly father we just thank you for the gift of of life of everlasting life uh through your son jesus christ thank you jesus for coming and saving us from our sin and we just thank you for the gift of net gift of net ireland and we just pray for your blessing to be upon ireland and we just thank you for uh, all the beautiful people that have helped uh, make net ireland ha happen thank you for tony and his family and the gift that they are to the to net but the, the church in ireland and we just thank you lord for the gift of our faith and uh, we ask you to bless our bless all the whatever we're doing right now we just pray for your blessing to be upon the work of our hands and uh and we just thank you for uh for the gift of life the gift of everlasting life mother mary we ask you to surround us with the veil of your protection and just thank you for uh for your example to us and, and leading us to your son as we pray hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. James, regards to Patty and Liam and Morgan, and God bless you. Hey, th Tony, and I want to end with thanking you, Tony. I, I think that's like you're, you and your family, you and Sheena and your, your family, we've had a blessing of, of having Brian over here with us and in Net Canada. And it's just, you, you're it, like, that's, the most beautiful gift there is the gift of our families that are uh, being touched by by net and that's the most favorite part of our year our boys have been to every net training since they were born <laughs> and mm -hmm. so it's it's like it's it's just a beautiful environment for uh for our families to be touched by and and just all these beautiful young people and it's 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 just a gift it's such a gift to the church and such a gift Amen. for you and your and your family but Thank you for for you know you were in business you were in the in the world and you and you're giving all a lot of that up to 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 do this but like look at how God's blessing you with such stuff that will last right. forever the yeah. investment you're making right now this is this is an investment that's gonna last forever so thank you for doing that I really yeah. appreciate that Amen. thank you James God bless you all right. Okay.